Welcome to SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is Into the Weekend with Bet DSI, the call we uh, do every week with Brent, the headlines manager at DSI Sportsbook, where we take a look ahead to the upcoming weekend's uh, major sporting events. Today is uh, February 28th, so we've got uh, the end of college basketball season coming up. We've also got a UFC coming up. The baseball futures are out right now. Brent, thanks for being here with us once again. Good to be back on, Peter. All right, so let's start with uh, with college basketball. There's two marquee games, uh, marquee matchups uh, coming up this Saturday, Louisville-Syracuse and uh, then the Miami-Florida-Duke. Let's start with Louisville-Syracuse. This one's probably going to have like a near pick em line. I wouldn't take either side in that one. If you hung a total in the upper 130s, I'd take a shot with the under, though. Yeah, I think you're going to see Syracuse open up maybe, you know, one and a half, two point favorite. Um, these two teams played earlier in January. I think Louisville was like a six and a half point favorite there. And, uh, like they won, Syracuse won by like two points in that one. So, I mean, you flip the location and two competitive teams like they are. Syracuse is going to be a small favorite because of the home court. And no, uh, the total is going to be around 129, 130 Peter. Ah. I don't think you'll be able to steal anything there. And then the second game, maybe a little bit more interesting, uh, it's Miami, Florida, and Duke. Miami, Florida, of course, having a phenomenal year. Duke has had some uh, high-profile losses. Where do you think the line's going to be for this one? Well, Duke's at home, home, so they're going to be opening up probably around six. I'm a little nervous about that because, mm -hmm. I mean, Miami's just been such a competitive team. But, yeah. you know, College Hoops home court is, is such a huge deal. I mean, yeah. you take a look at, at Duke, for example, overall 24-4 and four on the season. Every loss they've had has been on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, Miami, though, in, in conference, I mean, they're 14-1. to They're really, really strong team. So uh, this one is going to open around five and a half or six, but I wouldn't be surprised if people take Miami there, Peter. But when you say people, you mean the Sharps or the public? The, the Sharps. The yeah, Sharps. No, I, I would say the public, too, because we've seen a lot of Miami money just in the, in the last probably month or so. Um, you, you know, they, ever since they surprised Duke earlier on this year, back in January, we, I mean, they, they just destroyed them. I think it was like around 20 plus points at the right, beat right. Duke boys. So, uh, not, you know, obviously a lot of people got uh, their attention on Miami. They've been backing them since. And this is game will probably, you know, I, like I said, I, I think we'll see action split. The line drops down enough, Sharps might come on on Duke, but I can see it split both ways. All right, and then uh, there's two other teams that have caught my eye. They're interesting college basketball teams. They've been uh, absolute money-making, covering machines. It's Georgetown and Georgia in the SEC. Georgetown is, uh, they're both 9-1 and one against the spread in their last 10 games. And uh, I'm just wondering, when something like that happens, first of all, does the public notice and react? And second of all, do the Sharps uh, react, or have the Sharps probably been on them uh, during the winning streak? Well, the, the Sharps would react to a team like Georgia more so than the public would just because mm -hmm. Georgia, if you look at their overall record, they're still, right. you know, they still have a losing record. I think they're, they're 13 and 15 overall, whatever. But uh, again, this is a case where these two teams have played each other already, Tennessee and Georgia. Uh, Georgia won that game at Tennessee. So this one I could see, I mean, Tennessee's, you know, supposed to be the superior team. They're still going to be a small favorite, but it's going to be like one and a half, two points at Georgia this time around. Um, Georgetown, of course, is such a, you know, a top-ranked school. So they're going to get a lot of, lot of support from both the public and the Sharps. When the Sharps, of course, when the value is there, and public just generally when they're at home. All right, and then let's move on to, uh, you know, the MLB futures are out. And one of my favorite things to do is to look at what kind of sharp action, uh, you know, books like DSI have taken on the futures lines and maybe uh, extrapolate that from that, that there might be some value on those teams' game lines uh, early in the year. Uh, what kind of uh, sharp action have you taken on MLB futures as of right now, if any? Well, one of the most notable teams getting support is uh, is Washington. That's in the division. The the odds we came out with for them to win the NL East was Washington. Uh, they were the favorite, of course, minus 105. But, I mean, you, on paper, it looks like it's a competitive division. Atlanta's so good all the time, and they even got better in the offseason, you would, you might think. But uh, just ton of support for Washington, and that's coming from Sharps, not public. You figure right. the public would be on Washington, but it's the Sharps who are betting Washington. That's to win the division. That's the NL East. We took Sharp money at minus 105, so obviously that price has gone up a bit. But we're seeing support for them. Yeah, that's actually pretty interesting because uh, I was actually scanning over uh, Pinnacle's uh, odds for to win the World Series and uh, comparing it with, with a bunch of other books. And Pinnacle has uh, by far the worst odds on Washington to win the World Series. So obviously some sharp people are coming in on, uh, on some futures odds uh, with, with Washington. Is there anything else that you've seen? Yeah, I would say in uh, regular season wins, we've got a, a couple of people who, it's not often that you get, a, get a, you know, a, a couple of groups on the same side and looking the same way. Um, you know, sometimes you, you might move a line too much and you get 
opposing groups go, going against each other because you've moved too much or anything like that. But uh, White Sox, the Chicago, Chicago White Sox, under 81.5 is, is something that people have gone against. They won 85 games last season, but a couple of the Sharps we respect a ton have gone under their regular season wins. That was under 81.5. And, a half. and uh, the Phillies is another one where people are, seem to agree on under 84.5. Now, last season, the Phillies won 81 games. They were like basically 500, had a ton of injuries, but they're still getting no support from the Sharps, Peter. They, they're betting the under 84. Four and a half. Uh, we figured we'd get some, you know, money both ways at 84 and a half, just because the injuries they went through. You figured they might be he- more healthy this year, but no, they've uh, they've gone under 84 and a half again. Two really, you know, two sharps we really, really respect on this kind of stuff. Um, another one we'll touch on: Cleveland over 76, and you can kind of see that they made some some decent offseason moves. Houston under 60 and a half, and I, again, I mean, Houston moving uh, moving divisions, and they should just be a terrible team. They basically sold off everything they can so far. They're going to start from scratch, and so under 60 and a half, that's going to be ugly for them. Um, Seattle Mariners over 76 and a half. They I, again, that's a team that made some decent offseason moves. Uh, they brought in Kenry Morales, Michael Morris, a little more pop. Uh, I read they they moved the fences in in yes. Seattle as well, so it might be a better park to hit in for for those guys as well. They won 75 games last year, so every over 76 six and a half with the additions they've made kind of makes sense yeah absolutely wow that is great information right there brent that's why we do these shows with you that's awesome i do think that again i think that uh, might translate into some early season value on those teams in their individual games and then uh, we've got a ufc card coming up from tokyo japan uh, that's going to be exciting for you guys as always right yeah, we're going to do a, a live uh, wagering while the fights are on. We're going to have, uh, of course, wagering before the fights on the sides and the totals. You've got a main event of Brian Stan and Wanderlei Silva. I mean, Silva's a guy who's been been around forever, it seems. He's had, like, uh, well, 34 fights and, and, and dropped, like, 12 of those. But he's only 2-4 and four his past six. So, you know, UFC is kind of in a, in a mode where they'll cut guys every now and then. But Brian Stan himself, he's only won one of his past three. He was kind of a guy who they thought might make into, like, a poster boy for the UFC. He's got a good story behind them. So this is a fight that kind of both guys have to win to uh, to stay kind of in the top echelon there. And uh, you also got an interesting contrast to fight is Stefan Struve, who is a, a seven foot fighter who's seven feet, 255 pounds, and he's only 25 years old. He's fighting Mark Hunt, who's, uh, I think he's like five foot ten and 260. Now, the, the contrast in terms of just the height is going to be something to see. I mean, you're talking about 14 inches difference. So, obviously, Hunt is going to want to take that fight to the ground. Struve will probably just be able to stand up and kick him to the head. All right. Thanks so much, Brent, uh, for all this great information. Once again, we'll talk to you again next week.